Because my goal is actually, yeah, to finish books. Okay, hang on. I need to stop here to make a confession. I filmed this video almost three months ago, and here I am just now editing it. I clearly have trouble finishing all sorts of things, not just books, but I'm getting better. Before continuing, I want to mention a few of the things that have helped me rein in my reading habits. I have more than one nonfiction book going at a time, usually five or six, but I only ever read one novel at a time. On any given day, I may read from every book, or some of the books, or just one of the books I've got going. On any given day, I may read for a few minutes, or a few hours, or I might not read at all. I read physical books and ebooks, and I listen to audiobooks when I'm out and about, doing chores, or having trouble falling asleep. I have an awesome, somewhat organized to be read collection. I'll be sharing that at the end of this video. But that doesn't stop me from acquiring new books, which I often let jump to the front of the line. Importantly, I never have to finish a book before starting another one, and I don't make myself finish a book I decide I don't want to read after all. Okay, let's get into a three-month-old snapshot of my reading brain. I thought I might sit in my reading chair for this part of the video, but... <laughs> Fluffy got the real estate first. Hopefully she doesn't do anything uh, too unfortunate while we're there. Anyway, part of my reading strategy is to keep a stack of books in the living room. And this is the chair I often sit in to read. I try to read from at least one, two, three. <laughs> Sometimes I have four books in my stack, uh, but I thought I'd show you what's in my current stack right now. The first book I've got in my stack is a book that I'm reading for one of my book clubs called uh, The Warmth of Other Suns. It's about black people who lived in the South who moved north to cities like Detroit, Philadelphia, west to California. It's, it's a pretty hefty book. I've been trying to work my way through it. It's very readable, so it's not gonna be hard if I have to all of a sudden rush to get it done for a book club discussion. But it fits right into one of my one of the themes that guides a lot of my reading selections over the past few years is just getting a sense of our history, cultural, political, economic, all aspects of our history, particularly here in the United States, to get a sense of where we've been and how we've ended up where we are now. So highly, I'm not done with this yet, but highly recommend it so far. Okay, the second book I've got in my stack here right now is called The Perfect Vehicle by Melissa Holbrook Pearson. It is about motorcycles. Uh, my husband read it and he asked if I would read it. He's trying to suck me into learning how to ride a motorcycle. So I'll keep you posted on that. Uh, Melissa Holbrook Pearson, part memoir, uh, part um, just an exploration of a number of different kinds of motorcycle cultures. So that's been very fun. And the third book I have here for my weekday reading is a biography of Coco Chanel. First of all, I just wanna say, I absolutely adore uh, learning more about women who didn't fit the mold, who uh, led lives that um, were outside of the expected lives they were meant to live. I will insert right here <laughs> the book that I'm reading, listening to on my Audible account is a book, I'm trying to decide what I really feel about it, but it's called The Laws of Human Nature by Robert Greene. One of the things that I do like is that he profiles a whole bunch of really interesting people and one of them was Coco Chanel. I mentioned to my husband that I'm gonna have to find out more about her and he is just a really awesome guy and he went and got me Coco Chanel biography for Christmas, and it's, it's excellent. Uh, the other book that I just wanted to point out here is that I've decided that I'm gonna start having books that I read like just on Sunday, where I sort of ignore what's going on in the world. Not that I do it for the entire day on Sunday, but just get my head into different kinds of things. And I just recently got this book called The Lives of the Stoics. <clears throat> I've been really interested in Stoicism. It's it's a little bit more complex than just being serious about life. It's actually not 
that much about being serious about life. It's really about being resilient, how to develop resiliency in your life. The last few years have been challenging for me in ways that I just definitely wouldn't wish on anybody. And it's been really interesting to learn. I guess I just like to learn about uh, wisdom, approaches to life, you know, all kinds of things like that uh, to decide what um, is worth incorporating into my own life. And I definitely want to be a resilient person. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like uh, we're stronger than we think we are a lot of times. And uh, this is a way, one of my ways of discovering that. So this is my living room reading. <laughs> and my audible reading. I'll just go ahead and mention my Kindle reading while I'm here. I actually just barely finished a book on Kindle. I enjoyed it so much that I decided to uh, get another book by the same author. So the book that I just barely finished on my Kindle was a book for my other book club. I two book clubs by Tony Horowitz it came out in the he wrote it in the 90s called Confederates in the Attic and he basically went on a, a sort of a journalistic tour of various Civil War sites in the South and incorporated the stories of as many people as he could people that he met, different perceptions of the war, perceptions of people who do reenactments. He got involved in a little bit of reenacting, which provided some interesting humor. Uh, the people who are real hardcore, oh, that's a challenge. Anyway, I'm rambling. The most recent book that he had published was called Spying on the South, came out like a year and a half ago, and goes back to a lot of the places where he was. and. Honestly, this fits right in. So both of my book clubs are reading books that fit right into one of my themes that I like to explore is figuring out who we are, who we all are, and how we have gotten to where we are now. So anyway, highly recommend his writing. He's very, very readable. We're gonna go up to my nightstand now. Here I am by my nightstand. Really, I've only got one book on my nightstand. That's uh, what I'm trying to do, but I did want to talk about two because I just barely finished one and just started a new one. Before I get to that, I'm just going to show you what I've started doing is stacking up books that I've read, partly because I don't know where I'm putting them yet, but also it gives me a sense of accomplishment, especially because one of my challenges has been not finishing books that I start. So on my nightstand here, uh, the book that I'm currently reading is a book called The Summer Book by Tove Jansen. It's, uh, I'm pretty sure my husband bought it years ago and thought I would really like it. This has been beautiful. It's about a grandma and a six-year-old girl who are spending the summer on an island off the coast of Finland. And I would like to do that someday. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really enjoying it. The other book though, I wanted to mention because this is a library book. So yes, I buy books. <laughs> I buy them on Kindle, I, I belong to Audible, and I get books out of the library. I, I wanted to talk about this one because it illustrates some really important things about my approach to what I decide to read and also how the world sometimes gets a little bit smaller when I read, which is really nice because I love the expansiveness of the world, but I also like it when the world gets a little smaller. So anyway. This book is a memoir written by Althea Gibson, who was a black American tennis player, mid-century, last century. And I heard about this book when I was listening to a short, I don't know what they call them, they're on Audible. Anyway, it was like an hour long audiobook with Billie Jean King, who was talking about some of the women who were organized to help elevate female tennis players, particularly in terms of compensation. And she mentioned that she loved this memoir by Althea Gibson uh, to the point that she actually has read it more than once. And I thought, oh, Billy Jean King reads a book more than once. I need to read it. So I looked it up and discovered that, um, I figured it was out of print, but I looked it up, discovered that used copies are going for like $400. So my next strategy was to ask my husband to check to see if they had it at the library that he works at. 
and they do. So he brought it home for me and absolutely loved reading it. She was like way more interesting than I expected her to be, particularly in the way she told her story. Anyway, I won't go hugely into the story, except that I wanted to say <laughs> that it was really fascinating that as I was reading her book, it just turns out that race, particularly black Americans, is a huge theme in three of the books that I'm reading. And it was really fascinating to see the way they intersected. In this book, Althea Gibson talks about how her parents were born in South Carolina and ended up moving to New York. So her own family were part of that great migration north that is in the book that I'm reading for uh, my book club coming up in a few weeks. The other thing is, is that the Confederates in the Attic, the Tony Horowitz book, there was a huge section on, he happened to be in Richmond, Virginia, right at the time where the community was debating whether to put a statue of Arthur Ashe on Monument Drive, I think it was called Monument Drive, with a, a whole bunch of Civil War heroes, uh, Southern Civil War heroes. And I thought that's so fascinating that <laughs> I'm reading about a famous, this, a statue of a famous black tennis player in one book, reading about another famous black tennis player in another book. One of the things that I've discovered about books to read in bed at night before I fall asleep is that A, they just need to be really accessible, easy to read, easy to engage with, nothing I have to think too hard about, um, though I always like books that make me think, but I don't want to think that hard while I'm falling asleep. Nothing that is going to be so gripping that I can't put it down because um, I am not always really disciplined about going to sleep at night. So the other thing is, is that with my aging, my aging arthritic hands, I really have decided that this is the size book that works best. Not too thick, not too floppy. Yeah, so my nightstand reading. I have very specific criteria for. All right, now I am going to take you into my guest room. I have claimed the bookshelves in the guest room for my own purposes, my to be read stack. Before I take you in to see my to be read shelf, I just, I wanna point out this light that I have here. <laughs> it's my, my uh, bedside light. Very randomly, we got a new bed and mattress that ended up being much higher than our old one and discovered that reading lamps didn't really work very well on the nightstand for our old eyes. So we got these at Ikea They and they're fabulous because I can aim them any direction I want, get them right onto my page so I never have to worry about having enough light when I'm reading at night, which is awesome. Uh, okay, I'm in the guest room now and I'm about to show you my to be read shelf. Ah, before I show it to you, there are several things I need to say. First, we've lived in our house for 25 years. I've been collecting books for a long time. I've inherited books from previous generations, grandparents, in-laws. My husband and I used to own a bookstore for nearly a decade. Some of the books came home with us from there. And also, I believe in buying books from the standpoint of supporting authors, illustrators, publishers, etc. So, here we go. Uh, are you ready? Uh, there's my to be read pile. What do you think? I think I definitely fall into that category of people who enjoy that Japanese art of whatever. I need to figure out what that is and insert the term here. Oh, and there's my dead nightstand <laughs> lamps. Ah, anyway, all right, we're gonna end it there. Mm -hmm.